Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here. Moving on to the next question. We have to find the slope of the tangent of this function 3 over the square root of 11 minus x at an x value of negative 5 and at an x value of 2. So like previous examples, let's find a general expression for the slope of the tangent at any x value. And what we've been using is the difference quotient which is basically the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h, right? At any x value of a, that's what the slope of the tangent is going to be. So if we apply it to this specific function, what we would end up with is the limit as h approaches 0 of uh, 3 over the square root of 11 minus and then we're plugging in a plus h for this x minus f of a, which would just be 3 over the square root of 11 minus a, like that. And then all of this here is going to be over h, like that. And then from here, this one's a little uh, trickier. There's going to be a lot more algebra, just as a heads up for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to distribute that negative inside the bracket. So I'm going to have the square root of 11 minus a minus h minus 3 over the square root of 11 minus a. And then this is going to be all over h. And notice that because we have these square roots over here, what we want to do to simplify this is rationalize this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the numerator here by the conjugate of this, would be, which would be 3 over the square root of 11 minus a minus h, and then this sign changes, plus 3 over the square root of 11 minus a. What we do to the numerator, we also have to do to the denominator. All right, so lots going on here. Like that. And then notice that this times this, the three times the three, if we continue this uh, up here, we'll have the limit as h approaches zero. Uh, three times three is nine. And then the square root of, of 11 minus a minus h times the square root of 11 minus a minus h is just 11 minus a minus h. And then positive or uh, negative positive would be negative and then 3 times 3 up here is 9. Square root of 11 minus a times the square root of 11 minus a is just 11 minus a like that. So once these two expressions multiply this is what you would end up with in the numerator. And then what's going to happen is uh, this denominator, I'm going to keep these two expressions separate. So we'll have h, and then we'll have 3 over the square root of 11 minus a minus h plus 3 over the square root of 11 minus a, like that. Let me just double check, make sure that I'm all good here. Yeah, looks all good to me. So from here, what you want to do, remember, what's our goal? We're trying to get rid of this h here because we can't plug in the 0 for h yet. So what we can do at this point is we can take this numerator here and combine it into one expression. So we would end up with, uh, I'm going to do it over here and give myself some more room. Notice this and this are two different factors. So to get a common denominator, we would have to multiply. We would have to multiply these two factors. We'd have to multiply this by 11 minus a, means this we have to multiply by 11 minus a, and this we have to multiply by 11 minus a minus h. Top, we have to multiply by 11 minus a minus h, like that. So what we would end up with is 9 times 11 minus a, minus 9 times 11 minus a minus h, like that, all over these two factors. And then this is still going to be all over h times this over here, right? So lots going on here, as I mentioned, lots of algebra in this one. So we end up with that.
And now what we want to do is in this numerator, we want to simplify everything. So what I'm going to do, distribute this 9, distribute this negative 9. And so what's going to happen if we continue this over here is notice we'd have 99 minus 99. So those two are going to net out to 0. Then we'll have minus 9a, and then negative 9 times negative a is positive 9a. So negative 9a plus 9a, that would be 0 as well. And then negative 9 times uh, negative h would give us positive uh, 9h at the top. And then we're going to have 11 minus a minus h times 11 minus a, right? So this numerator here, it's going to simplify to 9h. And now what I'm going to do is notice the h's can now cancel out because we're dividing by h here, right? So if we take this entire expression and divide it by h, that's like multiplying it by 1 over h. Let me erase this here so you're not getting confused. All right, so instead of writing this dividing by h here, I'm just going to multiply this numerator by 1 over h. It's the same thing, because then you could see clearly how the h's are going to cancel out. But in the denominator, I'm still going to keep this over here. So we're going to still have 3 over the square root of 11 minus a minus h plus 3 over the square root of 11 minus a, like that. Now notice the h's cancel out. And so what ends up happening now is because those h's cancel out and we're not going to be dividing by 0 anymore, we can finally plug in 0 for all the h values. So this here is going to go to 0. This here is going to go to 0. And then once this goes to 0, notice that these two are going to be common denominators. It's going to be the square root of 11 minus a, square root of 11 minus a, so we could just add the numerator. So what this is going to simplify to, or actually, no, we don't write the limit sign anymore because we plugged in 0 for h already. So what's going to happen is here we're going to end up in the numerator having 9 over 11 minus a, the h goes away, times 11 minus a, which would be 11 minus a squared. And then in the denominator, remember common denominators here, so it's just going to be 6 over the square root of 11 minus a, like that. So after we plug in 0 for h, do a little bit of simplifying algebra, we're going to end up with this fraction divided by that fraction. And so from here what we could do, since we're dividing two fractions, we could take this 9 over 11 minus a to the power of 2. We're dividing it by this fraction, so it's like we can, we can multiply it by the reciprocal of that fraction. So I'm going to rewrite this multiplying by the square root of 11 minus a, and that square root of 11 minus a, I'm going to change to 11 minus a to the power of 1 half. And then this here, it's going to be over 6, like that. Okay, so from here, notice the 9 over 6, that simplifies to 3 over 2. And then notice that these two are ex exponential terms with the same base. So what we could do is we could take that 1 half and subtract 2, right? So on the side here, uh, what we end up having is 11 minus a to the power of a half over 11 minus a to the power of 2, which is like 11 minus a, we could subtract these exponents, 1 half minus 2, which is like 1 half minus 4 over 2, which would give us 11 minus a to the power of negative 3 over 2, like that. So this, these two simplify to 11 minus a to the power of negative 3 over 2. And if you want to make it look a little nicer, um, you could bring the exponent down. You could put these all in one term. And that would be a positive exponent in the denominator. And you can't simplify this any further. So this over here gives us the slope of tangent on this function, on f of x, 
at x equals a. That's the general formula right there. After all that algebra, this is what we end up getting. This ends up being, this is called the derivative of a function, which we're going to cover in future units. But for now, we got to go through the uh, difference quotient to get this general expression here. And so now that we have this general expression, if we want it at certain x values, we can just plug in negative 5 for a and then 2 for a. So when x is equal to negative 5, what would we end up having? We'd end up having 3 over uh, 2. And then this would be 11 minus negative 5 would be 11 plus 5, which would be 16. So we'd end up having 16 to the power of 3 over 2. Um, and then 16 to the power of 3 over 2, if I do this on the side here, would be 16 to the power of 1 over 2 to the power of 3, which would be 4 to the power of 3, which would be 64. Right, we could split up that fraction. So we would end up getting 3 over 2 times 64, which would end up being 3 over 128. And 3 over 128 does not simplify. So that there is the slope of the tangent at an x value of negative 5. So that's the first part of the question. And then uh, at an x value of 2, I think I'll have room here, so let's maybe box these off here. All right, so that's the first answer, and then add an x value of 2. If we plug in 2 for a over here, we would end up having 3 over 2. And then 11 minus 2 is 9, and then 9 to the power of 3 over 2 would be 9 to the power of a half to the power of 3, which would be 3 to the power of 3, which would be 27. So this would end up being 27 over here. And then th um, you can multiply these, but 3 also goes into 27 9 times. So we would end up getting 1 over 18. But if you didn't do that, you'd get 3 over 54, which simplifies to 1 over 18. So at an x value of 2 on this function, the slope of the tangent would be 1 over 18. So the two answers are 3 over 128 and 1 over 18, respectively.